What's up guys, it's GC Off-Road. Today, I'm gonna be working on my onboard air system. So I got a few of the parts in that I needed, mostly some of the couplers and uh, other fittings. I'm still waiting on the check valve and the uh, safety pressure release valve. So uh, I'm gonna break this up into probably two different parts. Today, I'm gonna start plumbing the line that comes off the compressor that'll run into the check valve and into the high pressure side of my system. So let's get started. This setup I'm using is a little sketchy. It's uh, really cold out here today. It's uh, I think 29 degrees right now. So I'm having trouble getting my propane torch to uh, heat this aluminum up to brace it together. So what I've done is I've got my Coleman camp stove and I'm running the burner on low and also heating with my torch. That way I can get the uh, thicker blocks of aluminum that mount to the compressor up to the right temperature. The product I'm using for this are these uh, burns o matic brazing and welding rods for aluminum. So basically what you got to do is get it up to 700 to 750 degrees. And just like you were soldering, you run through on the thicker metal and you scratch the surface. And when it starts sticking to it, you just kind of go through and lay it down, blending them together. Here you can see I've got the first pipe soldered on here. I put a good thick bead of that aluminum weld rod around it. We'll have to uh, pressure test it once I get the system all hooked together and check for leaks and see how it's going to work. The important thing you got to do about this is uh, aluminum oxidizes really quick. So you're going to need a stainless steel wire brush to clean and prep the surfaces right before you stick them together and start heating them. And I even use the wire brush to uh, scrub the surface while it was heated and right before I started soldering it and so far it uh, looks like it took we won't really know until I pressure test it but I'm gonna move on to the next pipe all right so now I've got this soldered together this will be the pipe that comes off of here it'll just slip down inside it's a, a pretty good friction fit as it is so I'm gonna lay this out and get it lined up I'm gonna prep the surface with a wire brush. I've already wire wheeled it. I'm gonna heat it up, uh, hit it with a wire brush, and then we'll start brazing this one. I'm gonna take my time, work around all sides of it, try to heat it as evenly as possible right there at that joint. I'll check it again. It's not quite there yet. Okay. So that bead just broke off on it, so it's almost hot enough. So I just finished re-soldering that connection. I'll give you all a close-up of it here in a minute. But uh, this time it filled in a lot better. Uh, like I said, we'll still have to pressure test it when we're done. So this thing's cooled down just about all the way to the touch. Uh, I had to go back and rebraze it because I checked it for a leak and it had a pretty bad leak right around the seam. So I went through and cleaned it up again, pulled the line back out some, rebrazed it. There's a big glob of it right there that I'm gonna have to file down. I've got a couple of these compression couplings. This one is a 3 8 to 1 quarter. The check valve I'll be running is quarter inch. Check valve will mount to this side. This side will go over here to the line and that'll go out to the check valve. Right here you can see I just got this hooked up just for test fitting. Coupler is sitting it's sitting a little bit closer to the fuse box than I wanted it to but uh, I think I can work with it. Well, yeah, I can make that work like that. I can just do a little bit of hand fitting with it to give me the space I need right here, but that should be just about fine. So I'm gonna have my check valve in line right here, and I'll probably come off of that with an air line, run up to the uh, inside of the fender here, and up to the firewall where I will mount my cutoff switch. So while I'm waiting on the check valve to come in, I'm gonna go ahead and gather up some of these other fittings I got and we'll see about doing the plumbing for the cutoff switch. This is the shutoff valve that I've got. It came off an old air compressor. I've tested it, it works. Basically, pressure builds up inside here and uh, when it reaches what it's set to, it trips this lever, which 
cuts the connection between these points here and shuts off the clutch so the compressor will stop putting out pressure. Now this is a 1 8 NPT fitting and everything else I've run on my system is either quarter inch NPT or 3 8 So I got this brass hex bushing is what it's called. It's got a quarter inch NPT outside and then eighth inch NPT on the inside. I'm gonna be routing it out of one of these cast like three-way fittings. This will mount up against the firewall, kind of tucked back in the corner. That way it's out of the way of everything. Now the line that runs from the check valve will run up the inside of the fender and around the corner of the firewall, and it will go into this side of the fitting. That'll read the pressure off of it that's in the system because it's after the check valve. Basically, once the pressure builds up in the tank and in the lines, it'll shut off the connection to the clutch. Now the line that runs out of here will run over to a manifold on the other side of the engine bay. So the thread tape is not sticky, it just kinda sticks to itself. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my thread started here. I need to wrap it around and get a little pressure on it so it'll hold in place. And then I'm gonna make two or three circles around it. And then I'm gonna pinch it down tighter and run about two more times around. You wanna make sure you go with the rotation of the threads like you would for putting the fitting on. If you have it wrapped the opposite way and you go to thread your adapter onto it or your fitting onto it, it'll unravel your tape and it won't provide a proper seal. And we'll see if it'll go on now. Okay, that's a much better fit. I'm gonna grab my pliers and just go ahead and tighten that on down. Like I said, this is the connector it'll fit to. Threads on just like that. So I'm gonna go over here to the firewall now and see where we're gonna mount this at. Now, I can mount this in here sideways and get it closer to the wall, depending on where it's going, or I can mount it with the side sticking out. And if I'm gonna mount it up here, I can face it straight backwards my fitting will be lined up with the firewall and uh, out of the way of everything. Yeah, I'm probably just gonna go ahead and mount this with the T fitting going sideways across it. That way this larger side will stick back and then I can use a uh, hose clamp to mount the lines from it to the firewall and hold it in place. All right, so this is the line I've got. I've gotta make up an end for it and uh, this end's gotta have a new clamp put on it. It's got a female threaded end on it, 3 8 inch NPT. <laughs> this pipe I've got here will screw into it. And I'm going to use this pipe as an extension just to give me something to clamp this against the firewall with. All right, so that's the line that's gonna run from the check valve to the pressure cutoff. Now I'm gonna get it laid out. I've got the line running up and across to right there. Um, that's where it's gonna end up mounting at. I'm gonna have to round up a couple of self-tapping screws and then I'll use two of these clamps right here to go around the line right here and then screw them up against the firewall and that'll hold it in place. So I need to trim this line and get it to turn this way so I can have it hooked to the check valve. So I wanna cut it about half an inch to an inch long that way when I actually go to set everything in place, it lines up like it should. Now, after I get all this plumbed in, I'm gonna have to do the wiring for this thing, so I'm not gonna bother setting it all the way up just yet. All right, so it's getting late, it's getting cold, and uh, I don't have all the fittings I need to do the next side of the system. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this video up here. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and check back for part two.